Today we're going to take a look at Power BI Dashboard in a Day exercise number four with data exploration. Here we have opened exercise three where we left off before. We're going to go ahead and save that as exercise four and toggle over to the report canvas. Now we're going to add a stacked column chart with an axis of year and a value of revenue. So let's go ahead and put that on our canvas. So from the date table, we're going to grab year for axis and sales revenue to value. That gives us a chart rendering that looks a lot like what we have in our instructions. Now from here, we want to add drill down capability by opening up the date's month name and adding that to the axis underneath year. So select the canvas chart element first, take month name and put it underneath year, which is going to go right here. Excellent. And now we're going to have some drill down buttons in the top corner of our chart that allow us to look at the data by month name. However, the month names are not sorted correctly. So we need to go over to the modeling tab and take a look at sort by column for this particular data. Over here, we're looking at date, month name column, and we want to sort by the month number. Go ahead back over, drill up, drill back down. Now that looks a lot better. January, February, March, April, all the way through December. Good, that's the sequencing we want to see. Moving on to step 12, navigate the bars. We want to change the font size a little bit on the x-axis. So we'll go to the paint roller here for the x-axis and we can change the text size. Increase that up a little bit to 14. Make all these labels easier to read. And there's other fonts and things we can work with. And we can do a single drill down by selecting the button in the top right. So we'll come back over here all the way up, pick that particular year, single drill down. And we can see the revenue breakdown for that particular year. Excellent. And our next activity is going to be to colorize the stacked column charts by manufacturer. Right now we're looking at aggregate revenue for all manufacturers. So what we're going to do is come back over here to our data for the chart, drill up, we're going to take the manufacturer name, we're going to add that to legend. By putting the manufacturer name into legend, we end up getting colorization as well as an axis of all the different manufacturers that compose this particular chart. From there, we want to do some grouping. So we're going to right click on the legend manufacturer and do group. We're going to select a couple of specific items to include as top competitors. We'll label that top competitors. Excellent. We'll select one here and we'll do an other grouping. Looks good. Have all of our groups defined. We're ready to click OK. Now our chart has manufacturers in just three groups for a chart that's a lot easier to digest and look at. We can navigate by clicking one of those, walking through the data, doing drill up and drill down. Next, we want to add the year on the x-axis label. So we'll come back over here, x-axis title is on. We will change the color and we will increase the font size. And I'm going to go ahead and change that font to Arial Black to make it stand out even more. That takes us up to step 33. Now from here, we can do a drill down to actually see records for one specific area. So let's go ahead and click on one of those, see records, and now when we click a data bar we can actually see all of the line item, we can actually see all of the line item detail for that specific bar as well as a go back to return to the chart. Moving down and going to drill up, we can actually do see data on the top left in order to see all of the raw data supporting the current chart render. So this can be helpful when 
you want to hover in multiple places, you're trying to get uh, exact numbers, you can actually toggle C data and get the raw data for the current chart. Next we want to take a look at units by country. So here we're going to add a new chart. We'll do a vertical column stacked. There we go. We're going to add country on the axis, which is part of our geography table. So we'll go ahead and put that on axis. And we're going to add sales units for value. So we'll go ahead and put that down here. Excellent. And as we can see, they're all pretty much matched up. So we need to add a relationship that helps us connect everything. To do that, we're going to add a new column to the sales table, which we'll do right here with the pop-up menu. And the formula will be zip country equals sales zip and sales country. So we'll type in zip country equals sales zip and a comma and sales country. Excellent. That creates a new column on the sales table. Now we can do the same thing on the geography table. We'll add a new column called zip country equals geography zip and a comma and geography country. We'll hit the check mark to go ahead and save the formula. Now that both tables have this new column defined for zip country, we want to go ahead and connect them with a relationship. We can do that on our modeling tab, manage relationships, which we see here. We'll do new. We'll select uh, geography's zip country column and sales zip country. So we can select those by clicking the headings and then OK to create. We'll close. And now the chart redraws and we see a major difference. It's much easier to distinguish the relationships now that we've connected the data. Next we want to exclude USA. It's such a large data bar it makes it hard to read the others. You can see that added to the visual level filters with an optional X to remove if we need to later. Now step 63, we want to look at adding a map to our original chart. So let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit. And we have a couple of different map choices. What we're going to do is add this one with the globe. And it comes with a data point for each location. Our location will be country. So we'll click on the map. We're going to take country and we're going to put that in on location. And units we're going to put on size. So with units and country we're now able to see dots for sales around the globe. Excellent. Moving further down we want to do a detailed table to the right of our chart. So let's go ahead and change our layout here a little bit, move things over. We're going to add a table to the top right. And within there, we want to select the revenue and years. So in order to do this, I'm going to flip over to the matrix table. I'm going to add revenue as my value and year as my row. There we go. Get a pretty good rendering. Now we have a line item for every year indicating the value. We are going to add conditional formatting data bars to that. So we want to explore revenue, conditional formatting, data bar. We'll hit OK. That will shade the background of that particular value. We're going to add revenue a second time. We're going to go into the details and we're going to show as a percentage of grand total. And we're going to rename that field to say percentage of total revenue. This gives us a new column that's displaying the same data in a slightly different way. Well, moving on to step 85, we want to colorize the background on that particular column. So for percentage of total revenue, we're going to do conditional formatting, but not a data bar. We're going to do background color, diverging, three different tiers, and hit OK. 
Now we've got a layout that looks exactly like our exercise. It has all the colorization to make the data easier to digest at a glance. Next we want to add a date range filter. So we go and click on the back canvas and we can get filter in the bottom left here. And the value we're going to be looking at is date. Go ahead and select that. And we're going to add that. Excellent. And we want to do the drop down in the corner as between two different dates. Perfect. So now we can adjust starting and end dates and look at one particular time period to get an idea of the totals, the percentages, and then the composite between different competitors. Very powerful way to explore the data. And of course, clicking a bar will let us explore that in more detail as well. If we want to do just top competitors, one specific competitor, there's a whole host of ways of exploring this data, and we can interact with it. And this is really why people use Power BI right here. All the interactivity, no submit buttons, no postbacks. And finally, we want to add a scatter plot to our chart. So we're going to lay this out next to our previous bar chart. I want to go ahead and duplicate page one and remove some things off the canvas to give us more area. We're going to take a scatter plot and put that on the right hand side. Drag out the dimensions. And we want the details to be product. So that's going to come from sales right here to details. Yep. We want our X average to be average of units, average of revenue. So X units and Y revenue. There we go. Make sure that both are averages. Good. And we want to go ahead and click the dot in the corner of the scatter plot. And we're going to say automatically find clusters. We're looking for four of them. And this is a great way to have Power BI interpret the data for us and look for commonalities and groupings that it can colorize. So here you'll see a yellow grouping, a black grouping, and everything's kind of segmented out that it found different patterns that matched up for us. Almost like a regression line, but for scatter plots. And if we click on one chart, it'll filter the other. So if we select top competitors only, we can see the scatter data points just for those other, top, Van Ardstel, top competitors, other, or everyone. Great way to navigate the data. And that concludes exercise two. We went through scatter plots, stacked column charts, we did row level detail, filtering, date range, data bars, background colors, and even a map. Thanks for watching.